Hi everyone, I have another update for you on the Millennium Tower Saga in San Francisco. This update's based on the monitoring report that's issued bi-weekly by the consultant involved in the project, Slate Geotechnical, as required by the City of San Francisco Building Department. Now there's some things that jump out to me about this report that no one else has reported on. The other thing I'll mention is that this is strictly a data report, presenting the plots associated with various instrumentation in the building, and uh, there's no analysis no discussion, no background information given about the implication of these readings. So that's why I'm here. I'm going to give you that update. By the way, if you like this kind of content, please be sure to hit those like, subscribe, and notification buttons. It would really help me out on the channel. So let's go through this checklist that appears in their report that's titled Reportable Conditions Checklist. The first one is an occurrence of an earthquake that produces peak ground acceleration in excess of 0.25 Gs. Occurrence of a windstorm producing estimated sustained gusts with velocities more than 93 miles per hour above a height of 30 feet above the ground. I don't know if that's related to overall stability concerns of the building or the fact that some windows blew out during a high wind event uh, not too long ago. A sustained decrease more than three months of piezometric head exceeding 25 feet below ground surface in soils at the building site. They have a variety of piezometers at various depths in the subsurface that monitors changes, in this case, they're mostly interested in decreases of the groundwater surface over time. Such decreases in the groundwater level would undoubtedly produce additional settlement of the building. A reduction in sustained pile load that is more than two weeks on any pile below 750 kips. So as many of you know, the structural engineers involved with this so-called repair installed a total of 18 pile at two corners of the building. These pile were subsequently loaded by jacking. The pile were connected to the existing mat foundation for the Millennium Tower building. Another criteria that they have here is a reduction in the sustained total load period of over two weeks in all piles below 16,200 kips. So that works out to be on average 900 kips per pile. A sustained load of more than 1,300 kips on a pile. Average building settlement of more than 2.5 inches in a year. Existing horizontal displacement at the roof line of 29 inches to the west or 12 inches to the north. And this is, seems a little odd to me. They've got the same criteria, but with half the amount of displacement as a reportable event. Growth in the width across or horizontal movement along any crack as measured at the crack gauges relative to the value of August 7th, 2023 that exceeds one millimeter. And then any instrument malfunction is a reportable condition. Here's a view of the instrumentation throughout the building slab. We can see we've got settlement markers, some are used in the tilt analysis and some are not. The location of the piezometers, location of extensometers. Uh, extensometers measure the change in length along two fixed points. And then the load cell location. So the load cells are connected to the top of the pile and measures the applied loading from jacking, as well as the change in those loads over time. So here's a plot of the overall settlement. This is when they started their repair at the end of 2021. You can see the amount of settlement you can see that the rate of settlement increased dramatically as a result of the pile installation. That's why they modified their plan from installing 52 pile to a total of only 18 pile. Here's a close up view of that settlement plot. What you'll see here is back in June of 2023 is when they applied the final jacking load on their 18 perimeter piling. They only recovered three quarters of an inch in building tilt when they were expecting a total of four inches of recovery over a period of six months. This tilt recovery stopped a few days after they applied their jacking load to the pile. Here's a view of the various piezometer readings that they have throughout the subsurface. Some are in the sand and some are in the old bay clay. Again, their threshold value is to not have the water level decrease by more than 25 feet. Just another view of some of this instrumentation data. All right, here's the meat of what I wanna show you today. You can see that one of their reportable conditions is a 750 kip or less load on any given pile. And you can see they achieved a maximum loading on individual pile of over a thousand kips when they did their final stage of jacking back in June. But over time, you're seeing that the load on any given pile is decreasing over time. Right now, the average load on a pile is 933 kips. This uh, other reportable condition of having 16,200 kips total, so you take the 18 pile times 900 kips, gives you the 16,200. So, Right now, the average load on piles is 933 kips, and a reportable condition would be the result of an average of 900 kips per pile. So you can see that this plot starts shortly after July of 2023, 
Now here I've added a trend line, which just follows the existing slope of the curve. And based on that slope of the projected rate of load decrease in total for the piling, they would hit their reportable condition of reaching only 16,200 kips total pile loading in the spring of 2024. So this is something I have not heard anyone discuss. Uh, it suggests to me that the, the loading on the piling is decreasing over time and it's probably the result of elastic shortening or possibly even settlement of the pile into the subsurface. Reportedly, these pile were all extended to bedrock for the 18 perimeter piling, but I think there could be some question as to how robust that uh, interface is between the piling and firm rock. So to me, the only way they can get the loading back up on these pilings is to go through another round of jacking. And uh, I haven't heard anyone discuss that as a possibility. You know, they just assessed bills to the unit owners in Millennium Tower to the tune of $6.8 million, which was a portion of the nearly $50 million cost overrun that they had for this quote unquote repair option. So that suggests to me that there's no more money left. If they got to go back and create access to these, these 18 perimeter pile and, and apply another loading on them, sounds to me like that's just going to cost more money. That's in all likelihood going to get passed back to the unit owners once again. So let's touch on a couple other things. Ron Hamburger, who's the lead designer for this quote unquote repair option, has stated that, you know, although they predicted four inches of tilt reversal for the building, the fact that they got three quarters of an inch, they're happy with that. And the reason why they didn't get closer to their four inches is that it's just incredibly complicated to model something as complex as the building foundation and the subsurface conditions and everything that's going on, which leads to another broader concern that I've talked about in a previous video, and that is uh, Lawrence Karp and Josh Harden, engineers in the, in the Bay Area with tremendous amount of experience, over 50 years of experience each, has questioned the seismic safety of this building based on the analysis that was performed by Ron Hamburger and his firm because they've made assumptions, uh, Hamburger that is, about the condition of the pile head mat connection. And so, if that connection has been compromised through movement, through stress in the mat foundation, the predicted performance based on their model is likely to not be accurate at all or certainly reliable. So again, I'm not trying to dismiss the complexity of this situation, but when you have engineers seemingly consistently making predictions that turn out to be not correct or not accurate, it gives, uh, some concern, I think, about the credibility and the accuracy of what they're doing. So I'd be curious what you think about this situation. These monitoring reports are issued every two weeks, so I'm gonna stay on the case. But it looks like uh, to me by the spring, they're gonna be making other adjustments to their quote unquote repair. Thanks for watching everyone, and be sure to check out the link in the description for your free download of the top civil engineering disasters of the last 100 years.